from Washington, D.C., it's The Cube, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Many events will extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Swami Kupaswamy, Director of System Integration Data Science uh, and Enterprise Data Management at Avaya. Welcome to The Cube. Good morning. So, a big you? day here with the cloud. You guys are a showcase customer of Oracle. Um, this move to the cloud, Oracle Cloud as at customer is a program they're doing. It's all about end-to-end, on-premise, in the cloud, all the workloads, same code base. This is the strategy of Oracle. So tell us, what is your journey with Oracle? What are you guys doing with Oracle specifically, and why the big announcement with them today? So especially, Hawaii has a long relationship with Oracle. We have our on, we started with our on-prem applications like having the database, uh, some of our uh, um, on-prem uh, enterprise applications. So with the cloud strategy, um, already we are in the journey towards the cloud with Oracle. Uh, the first step stone we had was the marketing uh, cloud, which is Eliqua. And uh, the next key project, which is uh, ongoing now, is moving the CX, um, the C PRM portion, as uh, Oracle Sales Cloud, um, along with the PaaS technology like uh, integrated cloud services, Java cloud services to enable uh, the integration between the cloud and on-prem um, without any like uh, 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 issues. Like you know, you, you can have the real time and make sure our systems, whether it is in the cloud or in the uh, on-prem, it's tightly integrated. So on-prem today, and you're moving to the cloud, 100% cloud or a balance? Can you explain, is that both, do you care, or what's the path? If you talk about the PRM portion, yes, we are 100% on the cloud. But in some still we have some of the ERP which is on-prem. Definitely we'll have the roadmap move towards the cloud. And what's the reason? What's the, what was the business reason for that? The simplicity, efficiency, cost, people, what's the driver? So it's not only in Hawaii, right? Across the enterprise, over the period of time, because of so many acquisitions, like over the period of time the, evolve, uh, the application got evolved, you might have a lot of customization. The main business problem we have uh, issue we want to identify, um, address and identify and address is to reduce those customizations. Basically with the PRM solution we are going with the Oracle Sales Cloud, we are reducing our 80% of our customization um, and uh, definitely we want to move to the uh, CapEx model from the OpEx to save some operational expenses. So, so being more agile for you guys with the acquisitions and your business process, is that the real goal? Yes. And we want to eliminate all the customizations we, we carried out from the past and how we can reduce the life cycle of any of our business processes to turn around the business faster and quicker uh, in the real time fashion. What's the impact for you guys, quantified? Is what's the like the ballpark, order of magnitude? Months, days, weeks, efficiency, cost? Can you like share any anecdotal data around the impact? Uh, so basically we are trying like, for example, in the PRM uh, process, we might have like a, a couple of weeks turn around on the, from the CPQ, configure code and pricing and then make it to an order. So we are trying significantly reduce the days, number of days, so that we can make a quicker turnaround during the like uh, quarter closes and like especially on the making the deals to the business. So Swami, we've seen this whole cloud trend evolve over the last 10 years. You know, started with Amazon, with infrastructure as a service, and then from, you know, from the bottom and then from the top SaaS coming in. So you've got a lot of different clouds. I want to know from a customer's perspective, how has that evolved in, in your mind in terms of how you've implemented cloud? Uh, and what's your expectation now as we are starting to see operational models both on-prem and in the cloud come together? So where are you guys at? What's your expectation? So basically if we talk about cloud, right? Uh, so as an enterprise, you might have different landscape. For example, some of the legacy applications which may be carried over from mainframe, some of them might be custom built, some of them might be vendor-based adapted applications. So to move to the cloud, first of all, you need to have a single operating environment, converging, converging all your different landscape, various landscapes to one platform or one suite so that it will be easy to flip it to the cloud. I think that's what the Oracle is coming up with like on-prem. <laughs> so it's easy, when you go to the SOI single operating environment, it's easy and me measure yourself. You, don't, you, are not going, you, are, you can make sure you are not going to miss anything to, uh, when you move to the cloud. So basically it's a function.
functionality or a benefit, you won't miss it actually. So move to the single operating environment, on frame, test it, validate it, core run it, and flip it to the cloud. Okay, so the value of that is obviously it's going to simplify your operations, you're going to cut costs, you're going to move faster, all that wonderful stuff. But specifically, how do you deal with, so how do you approach that with, so Oracle's coming today with the same, same message. Great. That's great for the Oracle pieces. So what do you do? You sort of isolate those mission critical apps and Oracle apps and, and sort of struggle through everything else or do you extend that Oracle footprint? What's your strategy with regard to driving that same same across your entire operations? I, I would say both. For example, some of the uh, applications which uh, I talked about like uh, Sales Cloud, which we have in the legacy uh, SaaS application which we are migrating towards the Oracle Sales Cloud which I, we can use it, and some of the custom built applications which has, uh, we built over the period of time, which we are migrating to the um, Oracle provided applications. For example, Excel based planning, we want to move to the PBCS, which is in the cloud. Or uh, whatever the like different integration systems we had, uh, uh, the tool sets, we can consolidate them into the SOA CS or JCS with ICS, so that we can consolidate them. So it's like going to be vice versa, some of them can be like within like different vendors staying uh, on-prem, but what are the things we can consolidate to the single operating environment, maybe with this Oracle, we can move towards so that we can put it in the cloud. So, we talk a lot about you know, the evolution of hybrid cloud, we look at different operating models, started you know, very rudimentary, and now it's starting to evolve where it actually you have the same operating model and you've got tool sets for application development. And that's one of the things that, that Curian talked about today was the ability to customize the SaaS through Java or whatever languages you want. Can you talk about what Avaya's strategy is with regard to extending customizations with the SaaS piece? How do you approach that? Exactly, so as we are talking like, uh, I want to again, want to quote the same example, Oracle Sales Cloud, which we are doing now. Uh, definitely some of the customization we cannot avoid based on your business process need, business needs. So, as we are talking now, we are using some of the customization with the ICS and SOA CS, which is a hybrid approach. We are doing in Avaya, which is the first time we are doing with the cloud services actually. As well as we are uh, uh, using the Groovy Skips, which is readily available with the sales cloud to do some more customizations, which we can enforce both on-prem and the cloud. Mm -hmm. How do you see, uh, Swami, how do you see you guys using the Oracle cloud machine? Um, obviously the Java cloud, as you guys just pointed out with Dave, that's your integration layer for the uh, SaaS and cloud with legacy on-prem, but now Oracle Cloud Machine specifically, as you guys go in the future, how do you guys anticipate using that product and how are you going to be growing into it? First, let me answer your question on the Java Cloud Services. Uh, currently, uh, we are using the Java Cloud Services for our PRM integrations um, to build our one of our uh, partner portal. Um, and especially with the ICS, uh, we are integrating that with SOA CS to do our process orchestration and custom error handling which we need from the business perspective to address our processes and needs. Is that going uh, good for you guys? Yes, it's working well, and uh, we are working with Oracle very closely on that, actually, so. So you, you're happy with Java Cloud? Yes, yes. Yeah, the, I mean, is it an aspirin, is it like a vitamin, or is it more of a, because it solves a lot of problems, right? You're integrating in. But definitely, if you see something like, which, we can, which is readily available, for example, I don't need to take care about my uh, version, uh, patching, and uh, uh, my infrastructure or servers is ready and available, I can start the coding right away. So it will reduce my development life cycle. So it's good for you. Yes. Okay, Oracle Cloud Machine, what's going on with that? How do you guys use that today? How does that grow into the future? Definitely Oracle Cloud Machine is going to be a pioneer in the cloud uh, landscape uh, when the, uh, the entire industry is moving towards the cloud. Uh, the, with the Oracle Cloud Machine, definitely it's a, like a visionary to see the cloud on-prem so that like some of the, like uh, like Kurian mentioned in his talk, because of, love, because of some like legislative needs, compliance needs, people cannot go to cloud, they can have it on-prem, and which is maintained by Oracle. Not, and you can definitely, you can save some operational expenses. Definitely, in a way also we look forward, like when you talk about the operational expenses and saving and simplifying the business process, maybe the step stone, when you do the single operating environment, uh, maybe cloud mission is the like first one to look for, Make sure you don't miss anything when you move to cloud, and the next step we will move yeah. to cloud. Do, do you so do you feel like the Oracle Cloud Machine essentially replicates the the public cloud experience on prem? I mean, the pricing is close. You know, it's a, it's a 
a commitment for the infrastructure and it's uh, more elastic for the for the for the paths. But in your mind, from a customer perspective, is that what you're looking for, or are you more dogmatic about the cloud? What does this hit the mark? Is a little bit off? Is it right on? Uh, one thing I want to quote from a Korean stock is like. Uh, one dollar for one terabyte for the backup. Ah, that got your attention. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the key thing, right? So, uh, same thing. Like when you talk about on-prem or, um, or the cloud, I don't see any difference, and I don't want to see either. Like that's what the article is saying. Like, you won't see any difference between our public cloud and your private cloud, which is in the Oracle Cloud Machine. And another gain, main thing the business will benefit uh, is like it is maintained by even though it is in on-prem, I don't need to talk about my capital expense, which is going to depreciate over the year, and I don't need to talk about my operational ex expenses, which I need to spend to maintain, patch, security, all those things, which is already taken care of by Oracle. And if, uh, like Oracle said, like if it is whatever we have with a metered subscription based in the cloud, if it is available in the on-prem, that will be the good so, choice. So assuming it's everything Oracle says it is, it hits the mark for you, is that what you're saying? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Swami, I want to ask you the final question. Kind of everyone wants to know is what is the um, what is the benefit? Or I'm gonna rephrase it differently. How do you see the public and private cloud working together? Because that's really the kind of the big deal here, right? You got stuff on prem, legacy. You move into the cloud. How do they work together? Those two major components, because that's what everyone's working on right now so in their in their architecture. So the main challenge in the on-prem and the public cloud is the integration, which is nothing but the pass. If you have your tight, tightly controlled, uh, tightly coupled pass infrastructure, either using ICS or SOA CS from Oracle Suite, uh, so I think it's going to be a good win. So I don't see any difference between the private cloud and the public cloud. So you don't distinguish between the two, it's all one? Uh, uh, yes, I would say yes. All right, so final question, what's the, what's the vibe here at the show? What's it like here for the folks that are watching that aren't here? Yes, so the, one of the big announcements Oracle made today on the Oracle Cloud Mission, uh, definitely I'm thinking it's going to be a game changer in the cloud industry. Uh, the who are like the new comers want to use the cloud, I think it's going to be a step stone for sure. Okay, so I want to thank so much. Avaya, big customer of Oracle, breaking it down here on theCUBE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. John Furrier with Dave Vellante. More live coverage after this short break. Thank you. <laughs>